Hi guys, today I'm going to show how you can modify a rain gorge like the Rainwise 111 here, uh, which is a wired uh, rain gorge, and uh, add your own custom radio. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use the My Sensors framework uh, to get it into your existing home automation or also build your custom uh, front end to, to show the, the weather maybe on a, on a tablet in your, in your home. Enjoy! So this is the Rainwise 111 uh, that I'm going to transform into a wireless uh, sensor that is uh, using the, the My Sensors framework. And um, I use it in a different uh, ways. Uh, in this uh, example here, I have uh, have, my, have it semi-wired and just mount it into a, a weather station where which, which is used as a central place for the uh, for the radio. Uh, so I, I have different sensors then, and it's uh, solar powered also. So, uh, but so that's one way to connect it. And um, if you look under the the lid here. It's just more or less screw connections to the uh, to the actual sensor, and the sensor on these tipping buckets is is really simple. Uh, it's you have a magnet, and then you have a, a reed switch uh, down here that opens and closes. So it's normally open, and when it passes here, there's a small tick, and that switch uh, closes and, and creates a pulse. So that is what. The sensor is actually doing and uh, as I said I'm using the Rainwise you can pick it up in in, uh, in the US for 70 US dollars roughly uh, I also recommend uh, Davis sensors um, other brands I've tried numerous different versions and um, and I think this is the it, it's a good combination of of, uh, of price versus uh, quality uh, these are easy to tune if you get into some problems if, uh, if they're not accurate or something like that but um, I mean most other sensors that are in the low or mid range is, is just I can tell you if it rains basically but it's it's going to be really accurate and you have a lot of time spending on, on trying to hunting hunting goes here so yeah I think I can really recommend this I have uh, four of these units and they they work uh, work perfectly um, but in this video, I'm going to also show how you're going to translate this into a wireless sensor. So, take one of the other units. As you can see, everything is sealed under this, this lid here. Um, here's a little uh, casing that I printed um, to be able to have easier access to the, to the sensor. I'm going to unscrew it. You can do it either when it's in the box here or or you can do it in advance so pull those out this is then pretty easy to to just everything is centered around this uh, double a uh, battery holder where i've just hot glued parts um, because it's easier than to to get it mounted and get a typed uh, uh, looking sensor uh, so yeah, hot glued, just this uh, Arduino Mini Pro. Um, and in the bottom here, it's the RFM69, which is a 433 MHz uh, transmitter. I'm using the high power one, uh, because there's going to be some range, uh, some distance into uh, to my uh, home automation here, the, or the gateway, which is it's commu communicating to. Uh, also notice here that the way that it's mounted that it's like flying here you just have the the connections here that is otherwise it's it's more or less loose here in the end and uh, that is to be able to get the most out of to really utilize, utilize the full range here um, of the so you get the because this is the uh, homemade antenna which is the really the smallest antenna that you can have for 433 megahertz that is behaving more or less in the same way as you would have a, a for a full uh, quarter length um, uh, antenna whip that would be then uh, 17 uh, 172 millimeters long so this is then roughly eight or something like that uh, here are also some components that is just uh, there to to measure the uh, how much battery is, is left 
uh, I'm using a step up or, or step up step down circuit here uh, to really suck out everything from that that battery but you're still sensing the the, the battery um, and that's just a normal um, uh, voltage division here um, you can see the building details in in my github account that you can see in the description uh, and then there's also a pull-up resistor for these um, for the sensor so normally then that the the input to uh, to this uh, arduino is then uh, high when due to the pull-up resistor and as soon as you as the read switch closes uh, it will be grounded to zero and so you get a falling uh, pulse then to this arduino so that is it, this one is is sleeping all the time but as soon as you have a pulse then uh, coming here from from the read switch it will wake up and it will transmit the the latest values it also stores it internally in the, in the uh, eprom here uh, to uh, so, so it remembers uh, the previous pulses that it has already sent uh, so this is a good um, previously i've used the same Rainwise uh, and really emulated Oregon scientific uh, protocols and so on. And, uh, that is more waking up and, and transmitting periodically, maybe once every 50 seconds or so. But the, the big difference here is that uh, this one only wakes up um, when there is an actual uh, transition here where there is rain coming and reports that, and then um, it doesn't really report that frequently. So it, it will last for a really long time on these batteries since it's not doing much more. Then on the other hand, this high power transmitting circuit can really draw up to 140 milliamps while transmitting, but that's going to be for a really short time. So this sensor is really adopted to be on, on battery life for, for a, a year, maybe two years or something like that with really good and reliable uh, data connection. So I will show in later uh, videos also how, how this will be integrated into to a weather station or how you can get this into, uh, into your normal home automation.